Today's episode of Fish and Dive Hawaii, we are headed to the beach and going spearfishing. We run into a huge school of fish. My friend catches his personal best and biggest fish and we catch some bait. Going fishing in the afternoon, I'm going to show you how we prepare fresh taco for bait here in Hawaii on a dunking rig and we're gonna I'm gonna give you guys a bunch of little fishing tips as well as some diving tips so you guys don't want to miss it it is early in the morning we're gonna go diving out on the west side with a buddy of mine, first time diving with him, but should be a lot of fun. I haven't dove in a couple months because of winter weather, but yeah, looking forward to it. I'm gonna load up the stuff now. What I do is get to the spot. Yeah. Stay over here. Aloha guys, Justin here with another episode of Fish and Dive Hawaii where we post all kinds of fishing and diving action here in the Aloha State. Tips, tricks, tutorials, vlogs, and more every single week, even twice a week. So if you guys are new here, click the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon. You guys won't miss an upload that way. And let's get right into this dive. So huge school of fish right here. These are called Ava Ava or uh, ladyfish. Very similar to the Ava, which is the milk fish. You can see just how big this one gets. And this is actually a really solid size one for this type of species. Unlike the Ava that get a lot bigger. I've seen 50, 60 pound milk fish or the Avas. The Ava Ava doesn't get nearly as big, but they're known for fighting a lot different than other fish when you're catching them off a pole. They like to jump out of the water like marlins and mahi-mahis and stuff. I personally never caught one on a pole, but I've seen videos of some, so they're really awesome. Very unique fish and they school up. When you guys catch these fish, they're very similar to the ava like I've been saying, and they're also very similar to the oeo, which are the bonefish, which is another popular target for fishermen and sometimes divers here in Hawaii. The meat stays on the bone, kind of like the bonefish's name and what you have to do when you prepare them is you have to take a spoon and scrape the meat off of the bone and there's different ways to prepare them that way like other fish but popular recipes are lomi o eel which is kind of like poke um, patties you can make fish patties out of them and yeah these are a lot more unique than other types of fish and I'm sure there's dozens if not hundreds more recipes you can do with these style of fish but those are the two ones that I know are the most popular and the ones that I know off the top of my head. Anyways, super stoked for my friend, personal best fish. And again, this is the first time that we ever dove together, which is really exciting because maybe I'm his good luck charm or maybe he's mine for finding the big schools of fish. But yeah, and I've never seen anybody personally spearfish these, the ladyfish. I've never been around a partner or anything where we ran into a school of them. So really unique experience right here. And then we're gonna try to catch some more fish on the three prong as well as with our spear guns. So right here I took aim at a kole which is a yellow eye tang I think I think that's what they call it. Um, anyway super awesome fried fish. I've caught these in prior episodes really awesome texture and I know back in the days they were just reserved for royalty so just the fact that we can go out and spearfish them it's really awesome and they taste amazing you, you probably see them at some local parties some graduation parties where they have divers in the family because that's really the only way you can catch them And this is a perfect example of why the pole spear three prong is so awesome is that if you guys missed the first time you can reload it try again and i was able to pick up a cole right there so i actually googled it they are called yellow eyed tang but you can also call them golden ring surgeon fish or spotted surgeon fish but if you're in hawaii just call them cole because that's what they go by and yeah i was able to pick up about seven six or seven of them on this dive So 
So one point that I really wanted to make in this video is that you'll notice these fish, these kole, they're not that difficult to catch. They kind of just hover on rocks and they're not the smartest fish. But that doesn't mean you need to take as much as you can or try to catch as much as you can. Just because there's no bag limit on certain fish, just practice sustainability, conservation, not just for yourself and the grounds that you're diving and your friends that go to the same diving spots, but for future generations so that we can all enjoy this sport of spearfishing. And of course, if there's parties you need to go to or you know you got kapuna, your elders that can't go diving anymore and they request certain fish, shoot some extra ones, you know. Always give back, but make sure that you're not just taking and just being greedy and taking all the fish. So that's my little rant of the day. Right here, my buddy Ali'i is taking a drop on this taco. He's seen a little taco right here. And we're gonna use this for bait in just a little bit. At the time that I recorded this video, I was still in the fishing tournament. So I'm gonna show you guys how I prepare fresh taco, fresh Hawaiian octopus for bait here in Hawaii. So today the conditions were perfect, nice winds, low winds, flat water. We hit the water early in the morning, but that doesn't mean that the fish are going to be there. Not always you guys are going to run into fish paws, but when you do, just try to take a drop, see what you can call in. I did a little bit of grunting, dusted some sand, see if I can bring in like some uhus or some joes or something, just to see what, what's kind of in the pile, what's kind of lingering in the back, if you guys can bring in any fish worth your while. So after a couple of drops on that last pile, I was able to call in a munu, which is, we also call it a Joe Lewis, or it's another type of goldfish here. Really awesome fish to catch. I stalked it a little bit and was able to line up a shot after hiding behind that nice little rock structure. So I kind of let the fish run a little bit because I don't have a reel on my gun. I'm going to pull it up right now and show you guys what exactly this goldfish or this munu looks like. So one quick tip when you guys are trying to secure fish after you bring them up to the surface is you want to make sure that the fish is either on top of your guys' mono line and not really on top of your guys' shaft because when the fish kicks down like that and it goes down the shaft and the barb closes, then you can lose the fish. It's just going to die somewhere in a hole. You'll never get it back. Right here, I'm just trying to finish off the dive with a nice little invasive fish. You can see that Roy hiding in that cave and it's going to swim out to the other one gone forever wasn't able to land it but now i'm going to show you guys the fish and then we're going to go fishing for the tournament Woo. nice little catch this is my kui got a munu a bunch of koles pananu my buddy shot this huge this is a lady fish um, similar to the oio the bone fish or the ava the milk fish we also got a taco we're going to use this for bait tonight and then he shot this big roy which is an invasive peacock grouper Who's home from Hilo? All right, did a nice quick dive this morning. I'm gonna throw that taco out. Best bait is some fresh taco. So um, yeah, we're gonna go drive to Turtle Bay, fish out in the front over there, and see if we can catch. Just try to get on the board for the tournament. It's made it to Turtle Bay. You see my friend on the rocks over there. He's got his fishing poles out already. Yeah, he got here about an hour and a half. We were stuck in traffic. Traffic is crazy on the North Shore, so I'm gonna um, take all my poles out and yeah, throw them out right now. All right, so I have this conventional pole right here, eight on sled, a little bit longer than the leader, and then we got this taco that we caught this morning. So I've seen you guys put it in paper bags. I don't know what it does. <laughs> I just tried it. 
but it looks like it kept it pretty fresh, so pretty close to having to This is a taco right here, and it looks like the colors are still good, huh? It's cut off a leg right now. It's honestly really the best bait you can use. Get that going. Nice white meat. It's really firm too. Throw this on the hook right now. Boom. All right, perfect. Now you gotta reel it up. It's about a foot away from the tip of the pole. If you go too far up, then it's gonna be harder to throw. If you go too far down, then it's just gonna be too much slack and you're gonna launch it pretty weird. So you wanna keep it, give it a little bit of room so you can get that leverage. Not too short and not too long. And it's all kind of self-preference as well. So when you guys throw a conventional reel, like this, if you just throw it and let your finger go, the spool is gonna run, be running too fast and the line won't catch up. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna bird nest. So what I usually do is I keep my thumb in the corner. So after I throw it, I'm just kind of holding it there. You just want to be firm so that the reel doesn't go too far, too fast, so the spool doesn't go too fast. And then once your lead hits the water, once you feel it kind of stop, then you press down so that your reel doesn't bird nest. And another thing too, like this reel, it says it, you have it in retrieve and free spool. So you want to make sure it's in free spool so that it goes down like this and when you guys are reeling it back in you want to guide it from left to right or right to left depending on how your reel is going So we didn't catch any fish today. Honestly, don't even think we got any strikes, but that's just how it goes. Now I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna clean all the fish right now. All right guys, we are in my kitchen now. Don't mind this ground beef. I'm gonna be cleaning the fish that we caught a couple days ago, it's been a couple days. I usually recommend cleaning the fish, at least clean out the guts and stuff um, within the first day, first 24 hours, but you know, I understand. Sometimes you don't have time like me. I've been super busy the last few days. so. I'm gonna clean it now and let's just do that really quick. So I have all the fish right here. I got all the coles that we shot. Pano no, I didn't get that on video, but um, yeah, it's like, that's kind of like a type of uhu. This is a goldfish, a munu. We call it Joe or Joe Lewis. Um, not sure the exact the English name for it, but you cook this similar to any other goldfish steam style like we've done in the last episode. The cole, you guys have seen me fry those up before. So let's go ahead and clean, descale all of these fish or scale all of these fish, clean out the guts and whatnot. So now all the fish is cleaned. I went ahead and scaled it, gutted it, and I washed it out just to make it nice and clean because it has been more than like two days since we um, caught them. So just want to make sure all of the guts and stuff, all the nasty stuff is outside of the fish. So um, now I'm going to bag this up because I'm not going to fry this all one time. And I want to make sure I keep it frozen. That way when I need to cook it, um, I can just defrost it and cook it right there and then. All right, so we got the coli backed up so we can cook it if there's going to be a party or something. I always have fish to fry up. I can defrost it, fry it right there on the spot. You guys got to um, want to make sure that you're careful with when it comes to coles and other type of whole fish because they do have a lot of spines. Like coles have that little blade on the um, tail over here. So, yeah, you want to make sure you're, you're being pretty careful because it can penetrate it and it can leak or whatever inside of your freezer. So 
This is the steam fish. I might make some steamers out of these too. This pananu and this nice, nice size munu. And yeah, I can make like a steam fish too. So if there's going to be a party coming up, I got some fried fish and I got some fish for the steamers. So ready to go. So that's the one great thing about being able to dive and fish and, and catch fish and being able to pr provide for family and friends and stuff. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. going to freeze these fish up, save them for a party. See you guys in the next episode. Shoots Mahalo. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>